Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. In today's video, I am going to talk about the difficulty ranking of 24 Chopin etudes. Um, during the past five months, when I kept recording the performances and the tutorial of the etudes, uh, a lot of uh, piano lovers and musicians has been asking me on the comments on YouTube channels uh, about uh, what Chopin attitude should I start first uh, if I'm in certain age group or what Chopin attitude is the best in order to let's say use it as a repertoire to audition for uh, conservatories or uh, music departments or to, to compete in uh, competitions so, and then in a matter of fact, some colleagues of mine has been asking me to give like a specific ranking, like the most difficult and number two, number three. And I really spent a lot of time thinking through the difficulty levels of each uh, uh, etude. And it's very hard, it's almost impossible to give like a specific ranking. Um, and if you are curious about there is a, a Hungley Verlag ranking of difficult levels, and most of the etudes they give it to seven or eight, and some hard ones they give it to nine, and I think this is from through from one to ten. So even the easiest one in this set is pretty hard because seven is relatively speaking very difficult level. So I came up with a solution of. Uh, grouping them into four different levels. The most difficult, rel relatively speaking, difficult, and okay, pretty easy, but not too easy, and then compared to the others, the easy ones. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, one being the hardest, and then level four being the easiest. So let me start from uh, level four, the easy, uh, easy ones. Um, I think for a teenager or for a college freshman who want to start Chopin etudes, um, Opus 25, number two, is a pretty easy one to start. <laughs> by uh, uh, Clementi or Moskovsky or even Czerny. So your left hand has, uh, has a snow and then right hand has some very comfortable but running uh, passages. So this would be like the least Chopin-like technique. Uh, so it's an easy uh, entrance way. Okay, uh, the next one I think would be, relatively speaking, easy to start for beginner. Uh, beginner of Chopin etudes, right? not beginner of piano playing, is the butterfly. Um, because first of all, it's very short, right? It's probably the shortest uh, in, in the whole set. And also, as I mentioned before, People don't talk about it, but really the butterfly etude is an etude of leggero playing uh, of octaves, right? But this is, we group them, or Chopin group them into four, which gives us really a place to rest, right? Because if he did... Training to 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 relax, but here Chopin basically gives us a, a rest area. So we only need to play them three times in a row, and then have a, a kind of like a highway rest area that we can use. Okay. Um, the next one that I think is relatively speaking easy is the Aeolian harp. Thank you. 
really is an easier version of that one because it requires us to have the four note fixed position. But then here uh, in the number eight, uh, we have very comfortable uh, intervals uh, in terms of the hand position, right? Within six. But here uh, we have tens, so that's much harder. Um, and the difficult thing actually for uh, the sign shine etudes of the number eight. So for for left hand to catch up the, with the speed and also with the happy feeling and also with occasionally very large jumps, uh, that's something um, we really need to focus on. Okay, next one is Opus Ten Number Nine. I call this the Opera, but I think that's the official nickname, and there's no nickname for this. <laughs> Number five, and I feel very uh, hesitant 
to put this into this catalog because to me this has a very difficult uh, technique in it. Not the beginning. The beginning is fine. Right? Only left hand has some uh, large roll ports. But here. As I thought, this is like a Tauberg uh, three-handed uh, uh, pianism. And so you, you have to take care of the middle melody with both hands, and then the right hand plays arpeggios up and down. So that's also not that easy. Okay. Um, so I put this probably as the hardest one um, in level three. Okay, now let's get to level two. Um, the first one is opus 10 number four. Uh, first of all, um, for me who has a big hand, it's not comfortable to play in this kind of squish, uh, very narrow uh, chromatic uh, features. And also it involves left hand. Um, and, and, and I mentioned many times in the tutorial, Chopin only uses one type of rhythm, uh, uh, of one type of, of technique, right? So one, two, and then here, right? So most of them, it's like one hand doing the easier parts, the melod melodic part, and then the other has uh, difficult uh, things. And, and here, uh, in Opus 10, number 4, the technique actually changes, right? You, 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 towards the end, your left hand has big jumps, um, and then has, has this famous difficult C-sharp minor arpeggios, and you have to squish things. So uh, we have to somehow practice how to switch from one technique to the other in split second, okay? So I think this is very, very difficult, okay? Um, the next one is the Toccata Etude, opus ten number seven. Um, the reason I put this in this catalog, um, I actually, I was debating between this one and then the, and then the opus 25 number five. And then I finally put this one into catalog two, is because this technique, the switching between three and six, I've never seen this in other pieces. Or if, if they are, I'm sure they are, but they're not like for four pages without a break. Um, so that alone is something we have to just learn for this four pages only. Um, and also, to be able to play these with the correct voices, Challenging. And the most challenging part of playing this piece is that this is, I think, a, a very lighthearted, a leggero one. So it's piano. So to play piano and then very soft and leggero and then with the correct voicing is really triple uh, the difficult level. Okay. Uh, next one is the revolutionary for of course this is left hand and it, it's one of the rare pieces that you use left hand only and in terms of the technique itself I don't think it's that overwhelmingly difficult but then it needs a lot of stamina to play through the beginning to the end the whole thing all right uh, the next one is Opus 25, number 4. And I learned this quite recently, and when I record 
heard the tutorial, this gives me very hard time because of the left hand. <laughs> left hand, I mean, yes, it has a single note with a six, but it's one hand position. And if you play them together, that's tenth. So basically, from the beginning to the end, you have to always stretch your hand, and that creates tension. And that's something we have to constantly remind our hands to relax, to relax, so that it's it's not tensed up uh, by the end. Okay. Um, next one is the six. And the reason why this is difficult, number one, we don't see this anywhere else, right? We don't have any pieces that has four pages of six. And also that left hand is doing something quite different compared to right hand. Because left hand once in a while has this low bass that we need to go back to. So that really breaks the pattern. So basically it's two orbits that right hand is doing and then left hand is doing something different. So I think this one um, really requires a lot of time to, to conquer. Okay, and then the, the next one is the octave etude. Um, and uh, yes, this is not that bad for me because I have big hands. I can use one three, one four, one two. I can alternate. But for people who have smaller hands, this is difficult. And also here the the middle section. Where's the middle section of this? The middle section, in order to play this very lyrically, is also a big challenge. The most difficult catalog, um, I put Opus 10 number 1 on top. Um, here is are some reasons why I think these are the most difficult. First of all, um, there is no absolute solution for uh, these etudes. For instance, um, always turn number one, you need to stretch, right? And we know that stretching creates tension, but there's no way to go around it, right? Unless you play a smaller version of piano, like Joseph Holman had, where you, you grow your hand as big as Rahmaninoff, right? But that's something out of our control. So um, we really need to learn how to relax while we have these big stretches. Um, for Opus 10 number 2, um, the, the wrist deviation is one thing we cannot avoid. The lifting fingers from white key to black key is another thing we cannot get around. So we have to really they teach our hands how to do under these incorrect uh, gestures, okay? Um, and surprisingly, the, the double thirds, um, which I think many people claim that being the most difficult, I don't think that's the most difficult, even within the six uh, pieces that I put into the top uh, difficult level catalog. I think that's like number five or number six, because opus 25, number six, the double thirds, it requires us to learn how to accurately adjust our angle, the wrist angle, to the most correct way. So the wrist has to be super flexible and to adjust to the, the angle so that the two hands can play at the same time, the two fingers. Um, but then it's something that with practice we can master. Um, and also the Winter Wind, Opus 25, number 11, um, that is difficult not because of the notes, right? If you watch the tutorial, if we group them correctly, it's really doable. However, it's super long, so it requires us to have a very, very, uh, a lot of stamina, uh, strong uh, muscles to be able to play until the very end with the same energy level. OK, 
Okay. And here I would like to mention opus 10 number 10 and opus 10 number 11. Those might be a surprise for people um, because I put them into the most difficult catalog. Um, number 11, really I think it's probably top three uh, in terms of the difficult level because it's such a big stretch. and then the con consistency of these uh, patterns uh, our hands are constantly doing this so the stretching we cannot avoid and also within this uncomfortable gesture we have to voice it correctly <laughs>